Hello again, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and welcome to Meteorology Part 9. In this video, we want to talk about cloud formation. Clouds are very dynamic and very interesting. We can watch them in this time-lapse video build and dissipate rather quickly. But how do our clouds made? Let's take a look. I like to think about making a cloud similar to how I might make a cake or cookies. I turn to a favorite page in the old well-worn cookbook, and there's several things I notice. At the beginning of a recipe, there are ingredients, and below the ingredients are directions, how to mix, and then how to bake the cake. Well, in this case, we're not going to bake a cake. Let's make a cloud. This image that I took a number of years ago represents a lot of what we need to understand in making a cloud and cloud ingredients. There's a few things I'd like to call to your attention. Notice right here, this is a power plant. Blues Creek Steam Station is a large coal-fired power plant. On the right-hand side of that, you'll notice some smokestacks. I'd also like to point out that there is, in fact, smoke coming from the smokestack. And above that, of course, we have the cloud. So what's going on? What are our cloud ingredients? Well, we need water vapor and condensation nuclei. In this case, in this image, I hope you can understand that water vapor must be plentiful in this area when we have this large of a lake. Condensation nuclei, what's with that? Well, these are the particulates in the Earth's atmosphere, things like microparticles of ice, salt, dust, and smoke. Water vapor does not condense in pure gas. Water vapor condenses on surfaces. And so we need to have small surfaces onto which the water may condense. In this case, smoke from the power plant provides the small surfaces on which the water vapor can condense. We see something similar in this image when I was flying across the center of the United States. Somewhere in the Midwest, there was a fire on the ground. Notice the smoke, and above the smoke, a cloud. In this case, once again, the smoke particles form the surface on which the water vapor could condense and form a cloud. So we have our ingredients. We need to talk about the location. Where do clouds form? Well, if you notice a cloud, a typical cloud has a nice flat bottom. This is what we call the condensation level. It's an altitude or a location in the Earth's atmosphere where the temperature is equal to the dew point. As we talked about previously, if the temperature and dew point are equal, relative humidity must be 100% in this location. This is the place where water starts condensing out of the air. And of course, that's the place where clouds form. So, I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to travel to the condensation level, but it's an interesting place. A number of years ago, when I climbed Mount Rainier, we were climbing the mountain into the clouds, and you could see quite well below the clouds, but then in the matter of just a few meters, we had our heads in the cloud, and it was very difficult to see more than a few meters because it was white to the sides, white above, and walking on snow, we were in a complete whiteout. This, once again, is the condensation level. Sometimes the condensation level is quite high, other times not so much. On a recent trip to our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., I took this picture of the Washington Monument. Standing at 555 feet tall, we can't see the pyramid-shaped tip of the obelisk. Its head was in the clouds, so we know that the condensation level was below 555 feet on this day. Here's another shot of the condensation level. This is from the North Carolina mountains up at Hanging Rock State Park. This was a very dramatic day when below the condensation level, we could see for tens of miles. And once again, in just a few meters, it became a complete whiteout with a very thick cloud at a slightly higher elevation. So, if we have our location and ingredients, we need to talk about the process. If I'm making a cookies or cake, 
I will need to bake my ingredients. For a cloud, keep it away from the oven. We don't want to bake it. We need to cool it. So how do we go about cooling our materials in order to make a cloud? Without a doubt, the most important concept for making a cloud is the idea of lift. We simply need to take air and lift it higher into the atmosphere. How is that done? Well, most commonly it's done through convective cooling. Remember, convection happens when warm, less dense objects rise. As the warm air rises, it cools. And as it cools and condensation happens, latent heat may be released when water starts condensing. That released heat may increase the convection for a period of time, adding more energy to the system. Keep in mind though, the higher up you go, the colder it gets. This can be seen in this picture that I took recently on an airplane flight. You can see the plane was flying at 40,000 feet and the outside air temperature was 65 degrees below zero. Along with convective cooling, adiabatic temperature changes come into play. Adiabatic temperature change happen as air pressure drops, so does the temperature. You can easily experience an adiabatic temperature change by going out and letting air out of your tires. Notice the temperature of the valve on my motorcycle tire starts at 74 degrees. By the way, if you try this, make sure you have enough time to pump the tire back up. But now you can see, after just a few seconds of letting air out of the tire, the temperature will be dropped significantly. Along with convective cooling and adiabatic temperature changes, upper wind currents may cause lift. These higher altitude winds are responsible for the formation and dissipation of the clouds seen in this time-lapse video. Many times we'll see clouds on top of a mountain ridge. This can be understood fairly easily. As moist air blows along the surface of the earth and hits the mountain, it's forced up and over the mountain. So very frequently, as in this picture of Mount Rainier, wind was coming from the west. As it hit the mountain, it rose up. When it got to the condensation level, a cloud formed and then the cloud dissipated on the leeward side of the mountain. Another method for cloud formation may happen closer to the ground when warm air blows across a cold surface. We refer to this as advective cooling. Advection is the process of moving moist air, and when we move the warm moist air on this spring day across the remaining cold snow, a cloud formed. Finally, one other important process of cloud formation happens every 24 hours. That's right, when the sun sets, nighttime cooling takes effect. When we take away the heat source, the Earth's surface will cool. This often results in the formation of ground level clouds, like this fog that happened early one morning. There are many different types of clouds and we can see cloud formation anytime we have the ingredients and the necessary cooling process. In the next video, we'll explore the different types and classifications of clouds. Thanks for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.